So just a quick one here on Tom Clark and his execution. Clark, of course, was one of the old time Fenians and he spent 15 years of very hard labour over in an English jail for a bombing campaign in England, like literally where you were isolated for 15 years, weren't allowed to talk to anybody. Most of his cellmates went crazy. But Clark came back and started reorganising for republicanism here for the 1916 rising that was to come. He had a shop there, you can see him standing in front of it there, and he had uh, Sean McDermott as kind of right-hand man organising for the rising, and he was um, working in a shop as well. So Clark was seen as the old-time Fenian, one of the main kind of respected old Republicans that was part of the leadership of 1916. And just to go on towards his death, I suppose, um, he was in the GPO in the rising, but then he was sentenced to death. And he was really mocked, like when they were being held at the Rotunda and that by some of the British officers because he was an old time Fenian. He kind of got a bit more abuse than some of the rest of the volunteers. They were eventually then, of course, sentenced to death in Kamenham Jail. And um, they were executed at around like 4 a.m. in the morning. It was actually probably about 3 a.m. when they started the executions that night. It was Tomas McDonough was executed and then Clark was being brought down. And Kathleen Clark that evening, like that night, late that night, was brought in to, to have her final meeting with her husband. And they were having us, obviously, it was very sad. And they were having their final words. And he said, you should remarry and not let my death cast a shadow over our three sons. But Kathleen was actually pregnant um, again. And she didn't have the heart to tell him because he was only a couple of hours away from death at the time. So she never told him that she was pregnant with her other child. So when the soldier finally came to take Clark down to the Stonebreakers yard to be executed, the first thing they have to do is put a, a blindfold around his eyes. And Clark said, oh, no, I, I don't want to. I want to face him without the blindfold. The soldier was very surprised at this because nobody usually says this. But he said, I'm sorry, sir, I have orders uh, to follow. So he put the white pin on his chest and Clark was marched down to the Stonebreakers yard. Um, it was very grim, quiet, kind of strange atmosphere. Bear in mind now, usually you have to change firing squads. The British, the British, by the way, when it was very hard for the British to find men to serve in the firing squad, they, nobody wanted to do it out of the British Army because it was the regular British soldiers at the time and they all thought it was kind of a disgusting job and it was really hard to recruit them. And then you're supposed to change firing party every time they killed somebody. But McDonough was just killed and straight away Clark was marched down to be killed and they never changed the firing party. So the firing party were all absolutely shaken and distraught. The pole where they kind of like they stand the the person to be executed by was covered in blood and and bone shrapnel and everything and it was a very like daunting sight to look at. And it was in this tense atmosphere that Clark was lined up to be shot. And when they gave the order to fire not a single soldier hit the white card in his chest. They all missed. And Clark, who had already had a long kind of history of struggle in his life, he didn't die instantly. He fell to the ground and it was moaning on the ground in pain. And the main officer in charge of the firing party had to go down and shoot him in the head with his pistol to seal the death um, and to put him out of his misery. And the women in the cells were, were kind of near the Stonebreakers yard and could hear all of this as they were going on as well. The next to be executed was Ned Daly and basically McDonough and Clark's bodies were just thrown into a little shed at the Stonebreakers yard. Now, I mean, they were just there wrapped in an old blanket, blood pouring out of it and Ned Daly kind of stood and said his prayers at Clark's um, body. Ned Daly was the next to be killed and he was linked in with Clark because Clark married Kathleen Daly, Ned's sister, who became Kathleen Clark. So they had uh, good family ties and Ned Daly was very shook. Of course, he was at next to be executed. And then the three bodies were brought in a um, horse-drawn ambulance down to Arbor Hill where the, the same fate happened to them. A priest actually said Father Farrington was there to receive the remains at Arbor Hill. And he said as it was a very sad sight to see the bodies just thrown in the back of the ambulance covered in congelated blood, the blood of all three bodies just all flowing in the back of this ambulance and they were still blindfolded. And you touched out one of the corpses and they were still warm and literally just thrown into the quicklime pit. Again, that was the British policy so that we couldn't 
I suppose, mourn our dead and have them as martyrs and heroes or reinter them elsewhere, etc. Um, but they didn't know, of course, that that would all backfire because um, they went too far.